Hey, everybody. Uh, all right. So a lot of you were out today. Um, so um, I wanted to just make a video of uh, the new stuff that we covered. So um, well, remember, we're, we're basically done covering new stuff. So we're we've wrapped up unit seven, at least the instructional part of unit seven. Uh, and it's just right now practice, practice, practice. Um, so uh, what we did today, uh, besides grade or unit five tests, um, we went over these practice problems uh, that were free response problems from the past five AP exams, all that cover uh, kinetic stuff, unit seven rate laws uh, and uh, reactant orders uh, stuff. So I just wanna go through those problems that we went over today in class, just for those of you that weren't here. Quick video, and you'll see that, you know, kinetics isn't, uh, isn't a topic that's covered uh, a lot on the AP exam, but you'll have a few questions. Like you'll have three or four points on the um, on the uh, free response that will have to do with kinetics. So total out of the forty six points, you know, about three points might come from uh, Unit Seven stuff. So I want to I want you to see how it shows up on the AP exam. And all the multiple choice practice that you're doing in the concept checks, the unit seven, uh, concept check one and concept check two in AP classroom, that's where you'll get your multiple choice practice. Um, so let's see how it shows up uh, on the free response. And what you're gonna find is it's just, it, again, it's just that memorization stuff that, that we went over, knowing that um, if you have a, uh, a first order reactant, the half-life stays constant. Um, knowing which equation to use, knowing that that half-life equation, T1 half equals 0.693 over K, knowing that that is only for first order kinetics, but knowing that you can use that when you have first order kinetics, it'll save you some time. And uh, essentially you're gonna see a lot of the same um, thing pop up over and over and over again, all right? So let's just dive into it, all right? So this was from last year's test, the 2022 exam uh, and kinetics Again, it'll show up on the multiple choice. You know, there'll be a few kinetics questions on the multiple choice, but um, uh, this is where it would show up on the free response. So we didn't get any kinetics questions last year until we got to question number five. Now remember, this is a total of four points, this question, question five, and you should be only budgeting about uh, 10 minutes total on this entire question. All right, so a uh, couple things to notice here. They give us our reaction. Um, and they give us the rate law. So they tell us the rate law. And so based on the rate law, they're telling us that this uh, reactant is uh, first order. So notice that it's raised to the first power. So we know it's first order. Another quick thing, remember, if they give you amount versus time data, and this is concentration versus time, which is good, but it could be absorbance versus time. It could be partial pressure versus time. Remember, you want to look for the half-life. So notice the first half-life to go from 0.16 to 0.08 took uh, 1.67 uh, hours. And if you look at the second half-life to go from 0 0.08 to 0 0.04, it took about the same amount of time. So the half-lifes are staying consistent, so that's just reaffirming that um, we have a first order reactant, okay? So we already know it's first order, okay. Um, so first off, uh, the first question is just figure out what K is based on what we know so far. Um, so we don't have the data to actually plug into this rate equation to solve for K. So when you have time data, you, you should be thinking the integrated rate law. So you have this integrated rate law you could use uh, because it's first order. So remember that that is on your formula sheet. So we could plug in, we could plug in uh, 0.16 in for here. We could plug in 0.08 in for here. We could plug in 1.6 hours in for time and solve for K. Or we could say, oh, it's first order, so we have this equation, which again is on your formula sheet, and all we have to do is plug in the value of the half-life, which we found out is 1.67 hours, right? The first half-life was 1.67 hours, so that's the half-life. Um, so we would plug in 1.67 here, and we would just solve for K. And just remember, whenever you have first order kinetics, K is just time raised to the negative one or one over time, and just make sure you use the proper unit. In this case, the uh, time was measured in hours, so it's hours to the negative one or uh, one over hours. All right, so that's real quick. 
All right, here they give us the mechanism, but we don't know which one is the rate determining step. Um, but we need to pick the rate determining step that agrees with the rate equation, which means that that shows that N205 is first order. And so um, there's really two answers here. You could say step one, and that's probably the best one to say, um, or you could say step two. And the reason that step one or step two works is if step one is the rate determining step or step two is the rate determining step, it would show this compound as being uh, first order because the N205 only shows up once, okay? If this is the rate determining step or that is the rate determining step. So remember, if the molecule shows up X number of times in the rate determining step in any previous steps, any steps before it, it's that the order is how many times it shows up, how many times it's involved in a collision. So if the third step was the rate determining step, notice that you have an N205 molecule here and an N205 molecule here. And so if the third step was the rate determining step, then N205 would have to be second order, but we know it's first order. So step one or step two, and the me uh, if step one or step two is the rate determining step, it will show this as a first order reactant, okay? And then part C, that's a, a very quick and easy one. Remember, constants, the equilibrium constant and the rate constant only change if temperature changes. So they're telling you same temperature, so rate constant remains the same. All right. All right, so that, that was the only kinetics on the free response. So, But it was worth four points. So four out of the 46 points on the free, last year's free response came from kinetics. This one's an easy one. Uh, and this one's probably worth two. I don't know. This one's probably worth one point, and this is this is probably the one that's worth two points, because um, I think this is the harder one uh, out of those. But um, yeah, okay. So that was from last year's test. Okay. So uh, in 2019, um, this was the kinetics question, and notice we didn't get to kinetics until free response number six. And so notice we get three graphs and notice it's the amount versus time, one over the amount versus time, natural log versus time. And remember, you're looking for a straight line. So boom, right off the bat, this is the straight line. I know this is second order. Okay, I know this is second order. Remember, if this, gives, if this graph gives you the straight line, zero order. If the natural log graph gives you the straight line, then first order. And if one over, uh, over time gives you the straight line, then it's... Um, then it's... Uh, uh, second order, okay? So explain uh, how the graphs indicate the reaction is second order, boom. That's the one that gives you the constant slope, the straight line, the linear fit, okay? Uh, that's it, that's all you'd have to say is the one over gave you the linear fit or gave you the constant slope, gave you the straight line. Uh, so that's, that is justification that it's second order, right? Uh, if this had given me the straight line, that would be mean first order, and if this gave me the straight line, that would be zero order, all right? Okay, now because we know it's uh, second order now, now we can write our rate equation. We say rate equals K and times the concentration of the reactant raised to its order. And remember, there's only one reactant, it's another decomposition reaction, so second order, so you need to have that two there, and that's it, okay? So that's part B, all right? Now, this one is kind of tricky, right? They give you two mechanisms, and they're asking you the, basically the same question. Is the rate law described in, by the mechanism uh, consistent with the rate law that you found in Part B? So it reads down. So if you got the wrong rate equation here, like if you didn't put the two here, and you said no and no for both of these, you'd get credit as long as you have the right justification. Okay, well, NO2 has to be second order, so that means Two NO2 molecules have to show up in the rate determining step or anything before it in the uh, mechanism. So if we look at this mechanism, the first step is the rate determining step, and but you have two NO2 molecules. So this is showing NO2 as second order. So this mechanism agrees with the rate law that we found in part B. And a lot of kids are going to be tempted to just say no because they, you know, why would they give me two mechanisms that both work. Um, it's like, well, they, they did. All right. So if we look here, here's our rate determining step. NO shows up twice. 
So this also shows that NO2 uh, is uh, second order. So this agrees with the rate law. This agrees with the rate law. So we're all good uh, there. All right. Okay. All right. This is the 2017 exam. And notice we get, it's not all kinetics. Remember, the first three questions on the free response is um, 10, there were 10 points, and you're supposed to spend around 20 to 23 minutes on these questions. So uh, part B is where we get the kinetics stuff. All right. So this is part B is basically about collision theory. So remember, uh, and, and so it says at 30 degrees Celsius, the re reaction is thermodynamically favored, but no reaction absor is observed. That's because the collisions don't have enough uh, energy to overcome the activation energy. However, at 120 degrees Celsius at a higher, uh, higher temperature, uh, we do see the reaction happening. Okay, explain why the higher temperature affects the collisions between the reactant molecules so that the reaction occurs. Okay, so there, there's more collisions because the particles are moving faster at a higher temperature, but the reason why the reaction is actually happening is because they're colliding with more energy. So particles move faster, they collide with greater energy, uh, more collisions can overcome the activation energy, and that's why we actually see the reaction happening. And then the second part of this question is they want us to, so they have this graph already written and the dotted line is what you need to add in. And so you need to sketch a curve that shows the collision, the fraction of collisions um, at 30 degrees Celsius versus the fractions of collisions at 120 degrees Celsius. So the solid line is the higher temperature, okay? So if you remember, this is kind of like a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. So we need, at a lower temperature, our average energy, which would be right around here, should be uh, less than the average energy of collision at a higher temperature. So we need to shift our, our curve over to the left. And, but whenever you shift a distribution over to the left and the area under the curve has to be the same, the, the, um, the peak has to increase. So you have to draw this peak above that peak, but further to the left, because it would have a lower average energy of the collision. And then remember, they told you at 30 degrees Celsius, you're not really getting many collisions that will actually happen to uh, cause the reaction to go. So you want that line to come very low uh, compared to this line where the activation energy is, okay? Uh, and then uh, part E was kinetic. So notice that the amount versus time graph, concentration versus time graph, didn't give you a straight line. So that's showing you that it's not zero order. Maybe it's first order, maybe it's uh, uh, second order, but we know it's not zero order because if it was zero order, this graph should be a straight line not a curved line, okay? Um, but if we look at the data table, remember, if we give amount in time data, look for the half-lives. So 0.1 to 0.05 took 10 hours. 0.05 to 0.25, 0 0.025 took another 10 hours. So the half-life's remaining constant. That's telling me that this is reacting, this reactant is uh, first order. And so they give us the rate law, or the student proposes, proposes this is the rate equation where the urea is first order. The data is backing that up because we have a constant half-life. And so that's answer to part E. Explain how the data support the uh, proposed rate law. Well, we have a constant half-life. Uh, the half-life remains constant, 10 hours each time, which is uh, consistent with a first order reaction. So there we go, okay? And then because it's first order, and we want to find the k value, we can use this equation again. And so all we have to do is uh, 0.693 divided by the half-life, which is 10 hours. So if we do 0.693 divided by 10 hours, that gives us our, um, our k value. And the units, again, are hours to the negative one or one over hours, okay? All right, and then this was the 2018 exam. Um, and we didn't really get any kinetics um, 
until question seven. Um, and just real quick, blast from the past, uh, PES, right? 1S2, 2S2, 2P3. So if we wanted to identify the element, it would be nitrogen. Um, remember, radioactive decay is always uh, first order. So to calculate K for part B, given the half-life, 10 minutes, we can use this equation. So this is our answer to part B. But because the half-life was in minutes this time, notice it's one over minutes is my units, not uh, one over hours. Okay. And again, those are the... Uh, questions um, that you kind of see on the free response portion of the exam um, involving kinetics. Okay, um, so not not too difficult, and you know again kinetics unit seven might be one or two multiple choice questions, uh, and uh, so and then. Uh, maybe three to four total points on the free response. Okay, so um, definitely something you want to know. Uh, they always tend to be kind of easy if you take your time to memorize all the different little things like this graph means that and what this, the half-lives are changing. What does that mean? The half-lives are getting longer. The half-lives are getting shorter. The half-lives are staying constant. Just making those connections um, will make it pretty easy to gain those points, all right?